The thing that's special above and beyond any place else about the Owyhee is the expanse of it. When you get out here, you're pretty blown away by the magnitude of it. Enormous vistas where you can just look around for miles and you can't see anything that has been touched by humans or impacted by humans. These gullies, these towers, these walls, it's, it's unreal. I never knew there was such a place in Oregon. Never dreamed there was this type of rock formation and that sort of thing. It was mind boggling. And it's also home to some of the darkest night skies that you'll find anywhere in the country. A place that's truly free of light pollution, where you can see the Milky Way in all its glory. One of the things about the Oahe, it's one of the largest ecosystems that has very little protections on it. Kind of Oregon's Grand Canyon in the southeast corner of the state. You're about to embark into some wild land in some natural spaces and places where you almost will feel like man has never walked before. So the conversation about protecting the Oahe has been decades in the making. The Idahoans got it done on their side in 2009. They protected parts of the Oahe as wilderness. And the Oahe proposal is 2.5 million acres here in southeast Oregon. And that's looking at more of a wilderness or a national conservation area designation. That happens through Congress. Or it could look like something like a national monument proclamation, which is done by the president through the Antiquities Act. I'm Julie Weichel. I'm a longtime resident of various places in the sagebrush steppe country ecosystems. And we are now in one of the best chunks of that sagebrush ecosystem. We're at Three Forks, which is where three branches of the Owyhee drainage come together and get together to head on north. One of the important things I think for us to know in the conversation is that 1.9 million of those 2.5 million proposed acres are lands that are already designated to have wilderness characters. And it's primarily those wilderness acres and the wild and scenic river stretches that I think it's important to preserve them the way they are right now. Because those are the characteristics we can't get back. We can't replace those if someday we view that that was a mistake not to have preserved them. My name is Dean Dunn. I live in Hood River, Oregon. Have for most of my life. I first came to the Waihe Sucker Creek area in 1972. The only thing that really changed is the fact that BLM put in Slocum Campground here. When we first came, you camped down along the gulch uh, hopefully on high enough ground when the water came, you, <laughs> you were submerged. And then they put in the gazebos and made a really nice, really nice campground. And that's really the only thing that's changed in 40 years. I do believe we need to do some form of preservation. What I would like to see, however, is make sure that that preservation does not limit access to people. But we need to preserve it just the way it is. There's so many reasons to visit the Oahe and so many unique things about this place to fall in love with. It's home to over 200 species. There's two dozen plants that only grow in the Oahe. You can only find them here. And then on top of that, you have just incredible recreation opportunities. I mean, what do you like to do? Do you like to camp, hunt, fish, hike, bike, uh, you know, stargaze, bird watch? You can do all of those things in the Oahe and you can do it in a place where there's incredible solitude and just terrific, amazing remoteness. I come to a place like the Owyhee to see a different part of the world, to see a new kind of terrain. And it, it's just a beautiful, inspiring landscape. And I just like to cover ground in a place like this and see what it has to offer.
If I only had one word to describe this place, it would be hard for that word to not be wild. I think wild definitely, it's, that's the word that keeps coming into your mind every, around every corner here. It's wild in, in every way, from the terrain to just the lack of infrastructure. I think it's important that people know that these places still exist and they're out here and they're for everybody. If nobody knows about it, it's hard for them to value it. You're not gonna love something that you don't know about and you're not gonna protect something that you don't love, so that's why we gotta keep spreading the word about a place like this, a place like the Owyhee. For 30 years, I've, I've worked for land management agencies, and 50 to 100 years from now, I would like to see it pretty much the way it is right now, you know? You know, even though you think this is a place out in the middle of nowhere now, someday, you know, there could be, you know, suburbs and places where people are living a lot more densely than they are now, population, and bringing those impacts in. It's a double-edged sword to get more people interested in a place because then it can become love to death. But I don't think this area is prone for that because it's a little more challenging than other areas. And the hiking is much more difficult and there's a lot of chance for solitude. A lot of trails have a lot of people on them now and I really like places that are, have more opportunities for solitude. When you're out here and you experience the Oahe, you can't help but think about the past, the present, and the future. It's a landscape shaped by age-old forces. It's a place where you can be totally present in the current moment. And it's a place that makes you think. And so it's really important that they're always here. And that's what permanent protection does. It says that this will always be here for everyone to know, love, explore, and enjoy. This is my first time to the Oahe, and the immensity of it has been what has struck me the most. It's millions of acres that offer so many different ways to experience those acres, and yet seems like it has very much been preserved in exactly the manner that it always has been in. When we look at wild places on the planet, very, very few have been preserved in the manner that the Oahe has so far. But now it's really important for us to take strides to protect this place so that it remains like this forever. Because if we do change it, it doesn't matter how impressive our reclamation efforts are, it will never be the same. I first came to the Owyhee earlier this year. I was traveling through Eastern Oregon with my gal Shannon, and it was like, oh cool, Smith Rock, that's beautiful. Oh cool, look at these beautiful lakes in the Cascades. And then this word that I didn't really know how to say, it's like the oh oh <laughs> What is that? You're just surrounded by these towers and walls, water flowing through amazing gorges and we were absolutely amazed by this space. It's a really unique and stunning wilderness experience. I think that there are a lot of places in the Western United States and in the world that are really stunning but are really tricky to get at. This is a place that's not that far away, that's inspiring, beautiful, pristine, and absolutely spectacular. What I enjoy doing here in the Owyhee is fly fishing my ass off. <laughs> you know, that's what I love to do. I serve inner city kids and I also serve combat vets. And so it's important to be able to come to open spaces like this for them to appreciate what's here, what's on the water, and find their place on the river. To me, wild spaces equals healing spaces. And with a lot of vets, they're looking for that same thing. And with the youth, they get the opportunity to be in a wild space 
to express themselves more, ask more questions, grow, learn, become a leader. And it's pretty freaking awesome of the transformation that you see on wild land. The Owyhee is enriched with so many different properties of healing that it needs to be protected and should always remain protected as much as we can take a stand and fight for it. It's really important to note that what we have right now on the books for the Owyhee leaves this landscape really vulnerable to development, to oil and gas, to mining, and I think that at the end of the day, we all want this place to remain as it is. And if this place was to change and become developed, I think we will have lost something really special and something that's totally irreplaceable. This is the last big, and I mean really big, undeveloped chunk of real estate where people can experience grandiosity left in the United States. Part of what makes it valuable is the effort it takes to get here and be here. And it's pretty special and maybe we should make sure that a couple more generations get to see it too. Thank you so much.